Hi, Victoria. Uh, this meeting will get started probably in seven or eight minutes. Okay. Hi, good day. Okay. Good to go. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the June 13th Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. I'm sorry, July 13th. Did I say June? July 13th. Um, <laughs> as you may be aware, two things that we have to abide by on the call. The first is the antitrust policy notice. Uh, so basically, we need to make sure that we're not um, doing any activities that are against any of the antitrust laws across the world. Uh, and then the second one is our code of conduct. So uh, basically be respectful to the other folks on the call and their ideas and their opinions. So as we look at the agenda today, uh, we have this standard announcement. Uh, the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter goes out each Friday. If you have something that you would like to include in that newsletter, please do leave a comment for consideration on the, the link that's in the agenda. And then any other announcements that anybody has or would like to make? No, okay. So then for quarterly reports, um, we have four reports that are out there. Um, yeah, Peter. I just wanted to say that we've finished uh, the draft for Cacti last night and I'm submitting the pull request right now and sorry for being slightly late. Oh, okay. No worries. Um, thank you for that, Peter. So we will be seeing the Cacti report coming in lately or shortly. Um, so quarterly reports, we do have an outstanding comment uh, that requires re-review. Peter, I think that, that one is on you for Cello. Uh, you did have a, or maybe it has been re reviewed already this morning. Um, so it looks like we're good. Um, maybe we're all set there because I don't see any comments left over. So thank you for whoever did do that re review. Um, for the caliper one, uh, oh, this is the one, Peter, you've got a comment. I think it has been fixed. Uh, at least it says it's been fixed. So if you could just check that and make sure that's the case. Uh, and then we can get this one merged in as well. And then we have the uh, Sawtooth report. Uh, so for this report, uh, as you recall, Rai did submit uh, the report for on behalf of the Sawtooth community. There is a number of questions that have been put out there uh, that haven't necessarily been answered. And so, uh, we do need the Sawtooth community to answer those questions. I did um, look at the transcript for the recording for the last meeting. It appeared that the Sawtooth community thinks that there's maybe just some typos that need to be fixed and there's no real questions that are out here. Um, and so it doesn't look like they're necessarily recognizing the fact that there are some things that need to, to be answered. Um, so we'll need to reach out to the Sawtooth community and, and get them to answer those questions at this point. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with the Sawtooth one. Uh, did anybody actually attend that meeting while I was on vacation with the Sawtooth community that could add any color to that? Arun? Hey Tracy, so I attended uh, the second half. So I'll let Peter first talk because I saw he was on the call for the first half. Okay, Peter. Yeah, so I, we, me and Arun kind of uh, covered the entire meeting. I was at the first half and uh, 
I remember reiterating the points that we've been talking about here as well regarding uh, maintainer liveness and activity. So basically in the first few minutes, maybe the first 10 minutes of the call, we were talking about the basic stuff that we here in the TOC always talk about. And uh, I, I showed up, I was there and uh, I reiterated these things and they seemed receptive to it. I did not get any sort of pushback. And, uh, and that was it. So from my perspective, the meeting went well. I felt like I was being listened to and we were in agreement about these principles or ideas. Okay, thanks, Peter. Arun, anything to add? Racy, so um, the previous meeting was different from rest of the calls that I previously attended. And it was also run by new members. Um, and there were discussions of the, some code being, uh, some code merges, the PRs, but I could not find any of those references anywhere. So that's the um, summary. Looks like there is some interest from new members who are, who are not maintainers currently on the existing branches which are released. Whereas there is interest from the current maintainers on new set of code. Uh, that's the summary. Okay. So I guess I will reach out and just uh, remind them that there are some outstanding uh, comments on this that need to be resolved before we can merge this. And we'll see if we can get some answers to those questions. Um, then I guess the other report that we have is the BASU report. I didn't see anything. I think everybody's uh, been doing some reviews this morning and we can probably merge that one at this point um, because there's no open questions. So we'll get these things merged that have been um, gotten the reviews this morning. All right, any questions or comments on the reports that have been submitted? Um, so I guess there is one question from the BASO team on their quarterly report to the TOC. This is most likely a question to Rai or Sean, maybe? Um, uh, yes, there was a question on the BASO report. Uh, Sean, if you could go to the files changed, uh, we can take a look at that particular question. Uh, so it's right here. Uh, scroll up just a little bit or down, however you look at that yet. Uh, have we been able to complete the ask around Circle CI funding by the Hyperledger Foundation? So Hart, I don't know if you have an answer to that question or if we can get an answer about Circle CI funding. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, Tracy. Um, for the BASU stuff, we were working with them to get some funding from the Ethereum Foundation unblocked, uh, which is overdue at this point from our CIP grant that we're going to spend on the, among other things, the Circle CI funding. So I'm actually talking to Matt about that in three hours. Okay, great. Perfect. Um, yeah, that being said, there's still some room to do like a, uh, um, uh, there's still some, you know, we're, we're still expecting to see more unification and more policies on tooling, uh, and we're expecting to get some directives from the LF. Okay. Well, we will uh, wait for that information when you guys do get it. I'm sure you'll present it here to us uh, to let us know about what that tooling is going to look like. As it trickles in, we will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Hart. Thank you, Tracy. All right. Uh, so for the upcoming reports, uh, we do have the fabric and the cafe report that are due today. Uh, Peter did say that he's going to get us the cafe report um, later today, probably. Uh, the fabric report, uh, Dave is currently on holiday, and he did mention that he would 
submit that report once he comes back. Um, so I'm glad he's not doing that while he's away. And then we do have the next statute the report coming up on the 27th, so two weeks from now. Peter. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to say the cacti report is now in. I, I literally just uh, did it this morning as in the document was ready. I just had okay. to submit the pull request. No worries. So we will um, all be taking a look at that then later on today. All right, so as far as discussion today, uh, we do have the project annual review policy um, that I think is ready to be voted on. Uh, I did make the changes from the last meeting where we did request a few changes come in. They are specifically around uh, the annual review timeline is going to replace the Q1 quarterly report. Uh, I did add a secondary TOC member to uh, review and corroborate the findings of the, the TOC lead reviewer. Uh, and then I also updated the template based on uh, what we did discuss in the June 22nd meeting to make it more clear um, and uh, remove some of the negative language that was in that particular um, template. So I think that one is ready to be voted on, but would like to see if there's any remaining comments before we do get to a vote. So I don't know if it's probably a dumb question. So we are saying this is going to be in practice from next Jan, or when are we saying it's going to be? Practice? Yes. So the expectation would be that the Q1 of 2024 report would be replaced by an annual review. I think that gives us time to also look at the project life cycle and badging and see if there's any sort of changes that might come out of that. Um, that would impact potentially uh, the status, right? Because this annual review says that we'll look at the status to make sure it's in the right status. Um, so if we decide on the project life cycle that we're going to add any sort of backward arrows that we don't currently have, um, then that could be something that would be taken into account as well um, in the Q1 annual report. So uh, thanks for the question, Arun. I think that's a good clarification. Other comments or concerns about this particular pull request? All right, if not, do we have a motion to uh, accept this particular pull request and implement annual reviews as of Q1 2020-24? Motion. Thanks, Peter. Do we have a second? That was a rune. Did, was it a second? Right. right. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, let's go ahead and Sean, if you would take us through a roll vote, sure that would be great. Uh, absolutely, Tracy. Let me check to make sure I have everyone. All right. Great. Uh, in the matter of the project annual review policy, uh, or no? How do you vote? We have lost or no. Sorry, yes. That's a, that's, wait, that's a yes vote. All right. Uh, Arun, how do you vote? Yes. Yes. Bobby, how do you vote? Yes. Jim. Uh, that's a yes for me. That's a yes. Thank you, Jim. Peter. Yes. Rama. Yes. Thank you, Rama. Stephen. Yes. And Tracy. Yes. Uh, that's a unanimous, well, from the attendees, that's a unanimous vote of yes for the uh, project annual review policy. Uh, I'll put those notes in uh, the GitHub page after the meeting ends, Tracy. Okay, great. Thank you, Sean. Yes. All right. Uh, next item on our agenda is the encourage projects to set annual goals. Um, this is a pull request that Aruna put in to the um, to the project proposal, uh, I think it was uh, the incubation uh, best practices. I, I forget what this document's called, but um, 
it basically just says, yeah, Arun, if you want to talk to it, I, I forget what the uh, particular file was. That right. you changed. Sure. So, so this this goes into projects incubation uh, entry consideration, and along with all the process that is currently listed for a project that that we are saying a project must follow when they enter in, because of the annual review process that we just voted for, we are now going to say it is required for projects to set annual goals, and uh, the words are used in a way that um, projects are told that. Like they will be asked questions on their annual goals. However, there is provision for them to deviate away from it because we all understand that priorities could change between the year. However, we want uh, the project team to reset or reassess uh, probably in the next cycle. So that's the summary of this proposal. And it's that's 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 it. All right. So Sean, if you wouldn't mind taking us to the um, files changed on this, just so people can see that uh, wording again um, that Arun just described to us. Any comments or concerns about this particular item? Okay, I will take that as a no. Uh, can we get a motion? to add this language to the incubation entry considerations? Sure, I motion that. Motion, oh, sorry. Uh, no call. That's fine, can we get a second? Second. All right. Thank you for that. Um, so uh, can we also, uh, Sean, just do a roll call vote on this? Absolutely. Uh, for the encourage projects to set annual goals, uh, Arun, how do you vote? Yes. I'm sorry, I skipped Arno. Arno, how do you vote? Yes. Bobby, how do you vote? Yes. Jim, how do you vote? Yes. Peter, how do you vote? Yes. Rama, how do you vote? Yes. Stephen, how do you vote? Yes. Tracy. How do you vote? Yes. Thank you all. Uh, again, unanimous yes for the attended TOC members. All right, great. So we will get both of these merged in then as well. Um, so I think the other item that we have on our agenda is the security task force. Um, before we get there, I think Bobby did ask for 10 minutes and um, I would like to, since I think we have time, uh, allow Bobby that 10 minutes to uh, talk about what was it the documentation task force that you're you're working on is that correct Bobby yes exactly so thank you very much Tracy and thank you for always running a great meeting um, and allowing us this time so the task force for both documentation and onboarding has been reported reporting back to the TOC monthly or whatever so this summer now that we have mentees and uh, learners working on the whole project as a whole uh, we're going to spend the rest of the summer meeting our goals. Um, so the team right now would like to present what those goals are so that when we come back at the end of the summer for a presentation, um, we can tick off all of the documentation and onboarding task force um, expectations. So I'm going to turn the meeting or the presentation over to my mentee, um, who uh, is awesome. So uh, take it away, Irunama. Uh, thank you so much, Bobby, for entrusting me with this role. So, hello, everyone. My name is Arunima Chaudhary, and uh, I'm an LFX mentee for the Documentation Task Force uh, and will be working uh, under this project uh, with my mentor, Bobby. So, let me share my screen. Uh, so starting with, uh, to ensure that the Hyperledger projects have the best possible documentation, uh, we uh, as a team under the documentation task force have divided ourselves into five, into six subgroups that we will be working under. Each subgroup will provide support in a specific area. So the subgroups are GitHub templates, GitHub read the docs, templates, best practices, onboarding, and user guides. 
and all the subgroups will work collaboratively to address uh, any of the documentation gaps and assist the project mentees in any way possible. Some of the shared objectives are to enhance the overall quality and consistency of the documentation across all the projects, to provide support to the project teams in utilizing the available resources effectively, to streamline the documentation process for a better efficiency and productivity, and also to empower users through user-friendly and comprehensive documentation. So let me start by explaining what each of the subgroups is all about. Uh, at first, we have uh, Jan Luca. He is the chair of the GitHub templates, and he will be introducing, uh, he will be giving us a brief on what the GitHub templates subgroup is all about. Okay. Hello, hello everyone. I'm Gianluca, an Italian software engineer, and um, I'm passionate to open source and blockchain technologies. I have also some skill in blockchain fundamentals and in uh, Solidity smart contract language. Uh, I would like to uh, contribute to Hyperledger project, supporting, uh, uh, for example, development teams uh, in creating uh, or updating documentation. And that will allow me to improve my skill in uh, blockchain, especially in Hyperledger ecosystem. Um, in particular, I'd like to support uh, GitHub documentation if possible and um, that activities and starting from requests. Uh, so I'll be open to requests for the development team during, during this summer. And um, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Kianluka. So next we have uh, the GitHub Read the Talks group, which is led by Tripur. Uh, Tripur, you can uh, go ahead and explain what the GitHub Read the Talks group is all about. So hi, everyone. My name is Tripur Joshi, and uh, I'm a technical writer and a researcher. I'm leading the Read the Talks group and uh, i want to say this is a really great opportunity for me as i am always interested to contribute to open source and working with bobby has been really great she is a really great mentor and uh, what we are going to do this summer is uh, we have started working with solang and their uh, like documentation and we are enhancing their user documentation experience by making it more user friendly and by making it more uh, beginner friendly and uh, uh, increasing the visualization in the documentation and side by side as suggested by bobby we are also making a standard user documentation on which uh, if any hyperledger yeah. member sorry Uh, should I continue? Please do. Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm also making a standard user documentation in which uh, if any of the beginner technical writers want to take uh, tell their uh, like documentation, what is missing, how can we improve it, and in the upcoming projects and all as the First documentation is always written by the coders if there is no technical writer. So it can help them to take off some things that uh, they may not be aware of. And this is how we want to make the Hyperledger community more uh, like uh, have good user documentation and streamline the iteration process for them. So yeah, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, thank you so much, Tripur, for giving us an idea of the GitHub Read the Talks group. So uh, next we have the templates group, which is led by Kajal. Kajal, can you please go ahead and introduce yourself and the group? Sure. Thank you, Arunima. Hello, everyone. I'm Kajal Kumari. I'm currently final year student in India. So I'm, a, I'm an Android developer and also a technical writer. Like I have contributed in uh, various open source programs in development and documentation field. So I'm very excited to contribute in Hyperledger projects uh, this summer. Uh, so uh, I have also uh, 
talked and identified some projects as uh, Bobby uh, told us to uh, find any projects need documentation help or anything. So I talked to some of the uh, projects and I also uh, like went through their project and understood what help uh, uh, the project can need. So I am the chair uh, of templates. So like we all know uh, the onboarding of beginners or the member on our website is very important. Like if I'm not able to understand the website, then I won't come again there. So we will be providing the standard and a consistent approach to documentation across various hyperledger projects at the various stage like for user uh, case uh, for uh, white templates for the graphic set or for, for the presentation. We'll be providing a templates, uh, like uh, uh, templates uh, having unique requirements and specifications. So our team uh, will work closely with the project team to develop customizable templates that align with the specific need of the project. And by offering such well-designed templates, we strive to streamline the documentation process and enable project team to focus more on building and ensuring that vital information is documented effectively and the users or every any person who visit their website who wants to know more about the project, they can get more idea. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Kajal. Uh, next, we have Victoria, who will be explaining us uh, the best practices group. She is also leading the best practices group. So, Victoria, can go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm Victoria from Nigeria, a front-end developer and a tech provider. I'll be working with the um, I'm working with Arunima and our amazing mentor Bobby to work to improve the documentation standards for the Hyperledger community. As the best practices lead, our goals for this summer is to identify and promote industry standard practices for documentation within the Hyperledger ecosystem. This ensures consistent documentation and it also improves um, readability and maintainability of the documentation. Now, these guidelines, uh, we are going to cover various aspects, such as the structure, the style guide, we are going to use the code snippets, the versioning, and then for maintaining the already existing documentation. By adhering to these best practices, project teams will be able to produce documentation that is of their highest quality, ensuring a seamless experience for users and developers. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Victoria, for giving us an idea of the best practices group. Uh, next, we have uh, the onboarding group, which is led by Akanksha Rani. Akanksha, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Surely, surely. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Myself, Akanksha Rani, and uh, I am also an LFX mentee for the Hyperledger onboarding project uh, this year, which is mentored by John, uh, John, Niku, and Peter. And I'm a huge AI ML enthusiast and web developer by passion. And I am a, uh, I am an open source contributor. Uh, currently, I'm pursuing a bachelor's degree in engineering. And I'm also very engaged in learning and expanding my skills. So uh, I'll be also updating about onboarding stuff in this uh, call. So uh, firstly, talking about the goals. So uh, I have divided the onboarding part in six different uh, six uh, in six subparts, the our goal would be including firstly the research and analysis that we'll be doing on different uh, users that will be approaching the hyperledger site. Then we'll be planning and scoping out how uh, we'll bridge the gap between a user who is coming for the first time or the second time on the hyperledger website. Then uh, uh, we will be designing uh, and uh, working on the development of the new site along with Ben because uh, since uh, we have a rebrand now, like uh, 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 there are some designs which are sent by Ben. So uh, uh, with, with alignment with that, I'm working on the design part and we have started on the, uh, on the main website. Uh, and other than that, we'll be working on testing and feedback and uh, we'll be working after that, uh, we'll be collaborating and 
uh, finally we'll be doing the refinements with the feedback of mentors so uh, we also had a uh, call the onboarding team had a call with arun where he also gave uh, his feedback and we are working on the feedbacks he gave along with uh, john and niku and i think like we'll be definitely uh, making an impact by creating a better website and a better uh, platform of hyperledger for new users like uh, the business users the developers maintainers and the enterprises because these are the three personas that we have divided uh, our main focus into this time so uh, i hope that uh, i really contribute my best and work along with the hyperledger team thank you thank you akanksha for giving us an idea of the onboarding group next we have the user guides group which is led by agnes agnes you can go ahead and introduce yourself Uh, hi everyone. My name is Agnes. I'm a technical writer and backend developer. I'll be helping uh, the documentation team come up with um, user guides for the different projects. Uh, what a good user guide might look like, and as Akansha has mentioned, uh, taking into consideration the different users that we have uh, in terms of personas. Uh, so I'll be working with both the onboarding and documentation teams just to make sure that. User guides cater to the different personas and are as clear as possible. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Agnes. So that's the end of our presentation, and it was a uh, this presentation was mainly a brief of what all the six subgroups under the documentation task force is uh, all about. Uh, thank you, everyone, and. If any of you have any questions, then uh, you can let us know now. I just want to say great job, guys. And um, I can't wait to work with you this summer to reach these goals. So um, get excited. I'll talk to everybody on Monday. And thank you for, for doing this. Thank you so much, Poppy, for all the assistance. All right, so now uh, everybody on the call knows that they're going to be reached out to by this group of people to have conversations about documentation, onboarding, um, potentially getting some help. I did see a lot of questions coming out in, in Discord from, from folks about what can I do to help. Uh, so now you know why you're getting asked these questions and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get our documentation in great shape by the end of the summer. So thank you for that. Uh, we're looking forward to, to really seeing what you guys accomplish and, and getting that read out at the end of the summer. So with that, we are now up to the Security Vulnerability Disclosure Task Force discussion. Um, I know that Hart and Arun, you've been um, working on this a lot. Uh, so I think at this point, we'll hand it to Arun and uh, you can take us through the what you guys have done and what the next steps are. Thanks, Tracy. Um, I'll pull up the document comments quickly. OK, so we have had uh, several discussions on this and within the TOC meetings as well. And uh, the previous summary that we had on the TOC call, we saw hard put up this document and then we took this over to the OpenSSF. Uh, working group calls on the which runs on Wednesdays and um, they were very gracious to review the entire document and they have had um, several iterations uh, I mean several people going through this revision of the document and suggesting improvements over so majority of the comments uh, that the OpenSSF team has been suggesting us is the emphasis that we need to lay out on the embargo list and uh, in the the kind of words that we can use or the language tone that we can use suggesting the importance the the um, actions that the embargo list should take and the role that they play and in addition to those uh, the suggestions also came in around uh, the roles and responsibilities of uh, the security representatives within each project I 
I know like previously within our TOC call, we had discussions of having a couple of members identified from each project who are incubate, who enter incubation phase and then have those uh, people go through or be a security front for the project. And it, the, the OpenSSF team also emphasized that there is need for us to have a, a expert. And when we say expert in security, it could be from different means, right? So for instance, there could be someone who is a cryptographer um, and we may need to sh uh, jump in as needed and, and when the role demands, we can pull in additional members. And um, so there could be specialized areas where somebody could have their security expertise on. And it's up to the, um, the, the security team so that they coordinate well with the person who raised an issue. And uh, the OpenSSF team has also emphasized more on the, um, the back and forth communication that should happen with the uh, person who has raised the issue. So the summary of that discussion or the comments that you can see over in this document is that um, we should communicate well in advance with the, uh, the issue reporter and we should identify at least if it is a bug or if it's a security issue. If it is a security issue, then the uh, security team who is working on it should follow up further and create a CVE. And uh, not just that, like once we, um, like the, the uh, once that is reported, then there is also expectation in terms of doing a private branch. Um, I forgot the exact term used, but a, a private patch deployment, I believe is the right word. So doing that private patch deployment, which allows us to develop and perform tests for that particular security vulnerability that has been reported. And then there were also discussions or suggestions around which tools should we use in order to um, notify about these issues. And uh, for instance, um, like hyper, at a hyperledger level, we could create or we could start using GitHub security advisory. Um, which we receive, right? And the security team who is working on those uh, received issues, they are responsible for that. So that's the uh, summary of different discussions and the uh, importance called out from the OpenSSF uh, team in, during their review. Um, so, so I also assume like at least majority, if not all of the TOC members have read, read through the document. Um, so the, the idea is that the document will be placed as a template and each project can further improvise on this. But these are the mandatory or recommendations going in from the TOC. And few of the optional areas are called out specifically. I remember, uh, for instance, there is an option um, of the embargo list, which has been called out that embargo lists are optional. Yeah. Um, so the embargo list is optional in the sense that if the project team is too small or like they don't have enough support, then it's it's uh, like the, it, it's optional for them to have an embargo list. I'm sorry, I had some disturbance at my apartment. Oh, um, right, so, so the next steps for us from the TOC is that we uh, proceed formulating this, uh, like the template which you see over here will be put up in Markdown as a recommendation in the um, TOC, um, uh, like for the projects and under incubation. And then each project will be asked to go um, and update this into their repositories. So I believe there were a couple of comments around what's the responsibility of the project teams um, in, in, in terms of if they have uh, different repositories such as ARIES, whether they should have uh, like different 
responsibilities across different repositories or should they have a unified approach across all of the repositories? That's one thing that I did not see a conclusion on. I also saw like Hart was open for suggestions from the team members. Is there a spot you specifically want me to scroll to, Arun? Um, no, Sean, I think um, all the comments are addressed. Uh, the ones that you see over here is just about a few things that Christopher raised. It's sure. the um, language which is already called out. And um, yeah, we can always improvise on further. So the, the, if you can see like Christopher is also emphasizing that embargo list plays an critical role and they have been provided with information that is otherwise confidential in nature. So that comes with additional responsibilities. Um, otherwise, it's the document is in a shape which we can proceed and vote upon. So Tracy, um, it's on us to proceed to the next step. If TOC agrees to this process, then this will be put up as markdown uh, in the repository. Okay. Uh, that's great news, Arun. I think this is, uh, you know, definitely taken shape and I, I think it's great that it's been passed through the open SSF. Uh, any concerns or questions on the security vulnerability disclosure policy um, that we would like to make sure gets into the document prior to um, the markdown being created? Any discussion from the, the TLC members? Arno? So I, I don't have any concern. I think this is great. So thank you, guys. Um, I there, Just one thing, uh, you know, in the introduction, it says something about we expect this document to be linked from security MD5. I would make this stronger. I think this has to be, you know, if it's a policy that applies across the board, security md5 is ought to point to it so that you know security md5 is what most people are going to see first they find the vulnerability they go to the security md5 and that tells them what to do how to report it it's important that this security md5 points to the policy so it's got to be a must not just like yeah maybe should or <laughs> expect is a bit too weak it's a very minor thing i just wanted to say that all right. Thanks, Arno. Any other comments, discussion? Peter? I also think it's great, and especially it was a great idea to take it to the open SSF and uh, thumbs up. And also, sorry that I wasn't, I couldn't be as involved with the creation of this as I want it to be. Thank you again. All right, thanks, Peter. Any thoughts on kind of that question that I think Arun posed, which is for projects that have multiple repositories like ARIES, that maybe the work is somewhat separate. Um, thoughts on kind of, you know, whether or not there's a single policy for ARIES or um, potentially multiple policies for ARIES? I have a thought, but I, I would love to get the other TOC members' thoughts, especially people that this is going to impact. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, Aries is almost, at, at this point, it's just the way it's evolved is almost separate projects. Um, you know, the three major, uh, the three major pieces of it are operating more or less independently and so it is interesting from that point of view we're going through it right now because we've got a vulnerability but it and it is in a common um dependency which is interesting um so we're we're living this right now we'll see how it goes so Stephen, does that imply that you think three separate policies or potentially four uh, for the common dependencies? 
or does that imply that a single one would be good um, to cover all of them? Or maybe you don't know yet. Um, I guess by, by what you're saying is the embargo list, for example, might be different. Obviously, the policy is the same across them all. Um, what you're saying, I think you're saying is just that the embargo list might be different for the subcomponents of the project. The four you're right for. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So yeah, it may so, be that that you have a single policy, but it says for this particular component, this is our list for this particular component. This is our list. Exactly. I, I I don't think the policy at all should change. I think it should be completely the same. However, the application of it might be different across the different um, code bases. Great. All right. Any other comments? Arun? Thanks, Tracy. So I just want to again repeat and probably call out all maintainers, if not already seen this. Please share this among your group, the other maintainers that you are aware of, because uh, once the policy is in force, it will impact all the projects, and um, especially around the responsibilities from each project. And um, since these are security matters, and we are publicly claiming certain aspects of how we deal with security issues, there is impact uh, to both the project as well as uh, the. the uh, foundation itself. So that's all. Oh no. Yeah, when it comes to this implementation, I think this may be worth adding a question to the report quarterly report template asking, have you implemented this policy? Right? Because I think this is something we're gonna have to track, similar to what we did for other things. And it doesn't have to be forever, but we might also want at some point to put some some uh, deadline, like, you know, we want to, all the projects to have adopted it by whenever we decide. Because otherwise, you know, and uh, honestly, I'm thinking of SOTU, for instance, <laughs> you know, which has not been very responsive on the quarterly report. I don't know that will be responsive for this either. And at some point, I think we need to put our foot down and say, look, this is a requirement. If you want to keep belonging here, you have to play by the rules. Yeah, I like that, Arno. Steven? Um, about the embargo list, this is a quick detailed question. I assume all maintainers are, uh, maintainers are notified and so on they're not uh, embargo list is beyond maintainers right that is correct um so the the um i think i'll try to answer that question in non-political way and also try to be nice okay so the you're right like embargo list is outside the scope of maintainers however uh, the language that is put up here allows for maintainers to have a say in including a specific group of people or an organization in the embargo list. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other comments, questions, discussion? All right, I will take that as a no. Uh, so Arun, uh, Hart, anybody else who was involved in this, uh, thank you for the, the work. We'll look forward to the markdown uh, pull request coming into the uh, TOC repository. Once it does, we'll uh, definitely bring this back to a vote for the TOC members to vote on. Um, one of the things that did come to mind as we were discussing this is, um, with with the call out to uh, kind of communicate this to the the ma other maintainers that might not be on this call, um, is is there a way for us to do that? Uh, is that the maintainers Discord channel? Should we be putting something on the TOC mailing list saying, by the way, this is coming? Please do review uh, with any comments. 
just curious if if there's any thoughts on kind of making sure that people realize that this is going to be a requirement, as Arno uh, stated, right? Um, that is going to be needed by each of the projects. Um, and how do we kind of communicate that beforehand versus waiting until we approve it? Any thoughts on kind of the best communication mechanism for that or just, um, you know, attempt to communicate as widely as we can? Peter? I would say as widely as we can. And the idea I just had is on top of the Discord channel and the mailing list, we could also open issues in the GitHub repos and say, this is just a notice. You can close it as soon as you read it, but we wanted to make sure that you see it. And then the information itself. All right. Thanks, Pierre. All right. So then I guess with that, if there's nothing else, um, I'll, I'll make a call to see if there's anything else anybody would like to discuss before we close the meeting. Peter? Just a quick one. I know I'm a little behind with the automation, the pipeline automation task force, but we'll, we will schedule a meeting for next week. So everyone who's on that, please keep an eye out for me messaging about it. Actually, Peter, the that's a good point. The automated pipeline task force discussion is next week. Uh, we can definitely use the TOC meeting to have that discussion in more detail if you would like, um, instead of setting up a separate meeting since it is next on the agenda. That's great. But I, I also wanted to set up a separate meeting just so that by the time we get to the TOC call, we have some conclusions and updates and maybe we can take the discussion even further down the road. Okay. That's Sounds ideally great. I'd want to do that. No worries. Um, perfect. So we'll keep an eye out for that. Thank you. Yep. Anything else that anybody would like to bring up before we close? Nope. Okay. Well, uh, thank you all for the participation discussion uh, presentations today. We will talk to you again next week. Thanks all. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you to USC members and thank you to the presenters from the onboarding uh, group. That was awesome. Yes. Thank you guys. Thank you.